I want to talk to you today about why monetizing Christian videos is a sin. I'm going to prove it from the King James Bible. Before we get started, though, i got some exciting news to tell everybody. Uh, I was outside the other day, and this car pulls up. This guy gets out, and he walks up, and he hands me this envelope here. And, I mean, the thing, i got to tell you, it's full of money. It was just amazing. And uh, he didn't say where he was from. I don't know where the money came from, but I'm just so glad that uh, this happened. Because I got bills to pay. It's not full of money, by the way. It's a brother from Australia that sent it to me. So it's a nice letter and some neat little illustrations and things and a, and a neat little tract about Jesus and the Quran. So okay, I'm not holding it right. There we go. Jesus and the Quran. So it's not an envelope of money. So what point were you trying to make there? Well, the point I'm trying to make is when somebody monetizes their channel... They're essentially taking an envelope of money, and they don't know what the source is. You see, the way monetization works on YouTube and the, the whole system in there, it's based on behavioral marketing. If you get somebody that's into sodomy, and they're looking up a bunch of gay pride stuff or whatever else, um, they go to click, and all of a sudden they get under conviction. They're thinking, maybe I should find out about salvation or whatever else. They click on a... Uh, Christian channel, it's going to come up with ads at the beginning for gay pride rallies or anything related to gay pride type of stuff. Not to mention the fact that YouTube slash Google itself is very promotional of the sodomite agenda. Why would a Christian take money from them? And uh, Sister Sally over at Heal and Restore, uh, her channel is there, Heal and Restore, uh, she showed a video of Robert Breaker, the fact that he's monetized, and there were ads for the Vatican coming up at the beginning of his salvation testimony. Why would you monetize your salvation testimony video? And, you know, for those of you out there that are wondering, they say, well, what about you? I've seen some of your videos are monetized. Well, let me explain. Let me put up a screenshot here because I was, I've been dealing with this thing now for years. They keep doing this thing to me. Whenever they find uh, music that I have in my videos... They will say, uh, they'll monetize it. They, they say it's copyright claim, and then they monetize it for the claimant. I don't make a cent off of those things. The money that they, from these ads, goes to the person that has these royalty-free CDs that, you know, come out and things. Problem is, I own the rights to the royalty-free CDs. I paid ridiculous amounts for these, for this music. You know, some of them are like $150 per CD with, you know, a couple songs on them. You know, why? Because I have license then that I can put them in my video production. You know, productions, I should say. See? They have no copyright claim, and yet they put it on there. I strike it down. They go, oh, okay, yeah, we, you know, we, we back off. I, I say, hey, I got the license. I got, everything's all legal here. You have no right to put copyright claims on my video. Oh, okay. And they'll put it down for a couple months, and then they bring it right back up again. See? So if you see, you know, um monetization ads and stuff like that on any of my videos that's the reason there's music in it and again they're monetizing things it's not coming to me all right and i've shown it many many times in my videos my account is not monetized all right i don't make one cent i have never gotten one cent from google and let me just say this and i'm going to be talking more about this in our study today um, i have actually gotten uh, donations from people that I know are crooked and whatever else, and I send them their money back. This ministry is not about money. But let's let's talk about this, okay? Because I know some people, oh, this is, you know, you're making trouble and whatever else. Uh, brethren, the truth, whenever you preach the truth, the truth makes trouble. But let's just look at this thing. Let's, let's consider the arguments against monetizing Christian videos. Now, if you're a Christian... You can start out by going in your Bible, your King James Bible to Genesis chapter 14. But if you're a Christian and you have a channel that does whatever, something that's not spiritual in nature, you, you're putting out uh, things on how to grow organic fruit or vegetables or something like this, or, or you're making, you know, weaving baskets or whatever the thing is, and you want to be monetized or whatever, well, I don't have so much of a problem with that because it's a secular occupation that you're doing as a Christian. Okay, fine. But when you're in ministry, you got to be real careful about that. 
Genesis chapter 14, we're going to begin at verse 5 here. And in the 14th year came Chedor Lamar, probably saying that wrong, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephims and in Ashtaroth, uh, Karnaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emims in Sheva, uh, Kiriathamon, Tham. <laughs> Some of these Old Testament words are crazy. And the Horites in, the, in their Mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishpat, uh, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the, Mount, of the Amalekites and also the Amorites, and dwelt in Hazazun Tamar. My, my Bible is the, the Cambridge Bible. It has the pronunciation thing, so it's sometimes it makes it easier, but sometimes it's not. Verse 8, And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Siddim, with Chedor Leomer, the king of Elam, and with Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of el uh, four kings with five. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they, they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. Okay, just stop there for a minute. Um, the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah lost the battle, in other words, and they ran out into these slime pit things, and you know, and they were out there hiding, essentially. Verse 12, And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. That's a lot of servants, you know, born in your own house. 318. Wow. Verse 15. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Okay, you can read in the book of Hebrews um, who the king of, or the uh, priest of Melchizedek, Melchizedek is. Pretty interesting study. But you see there that the Lord is blessing Abram for what he did. Okay, God blessed Abram. This is before he was called Abraham, by the way. All right. Now look what happens here in verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. All right. He's giving God glory here. That I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshkel, and Memory, let them take their portion. Very interesting. What do we have today? YouTube here just a little bit ago, they had the YouTube symbol, and right beside it was a little gay pride rally thing, the little rainbow deal. So you have the modern day supporters, one of many, you know, it's not just YouTube, but I'm saying one of many modern day supporters of Sodom and Gomorrah, the sin of Sodom. And Abram, way back here in Genesis, they, this king of Sodom says, hey, you're doing a really good job. Here, take some uh, goods, some money, essentially. And Abram says, I'm not taking a cent from you. I'm not going to take, I mean, look what he says. I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet. I don't want anything from you. 
to the king of Sodom. And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Let me ask you a question. For you people out there that support monetized uh, <coughs> Christian channels that are putting out Christian videos, what do you think God thinks about that? You know, I've seen people, you know, and they, they're sending donations to these monetized channels. Why? They're getting paid by Google. And you get up into the 100,000 plus range of subscribers and you start having your videos go into the multi-million view range, you're making good money. Don't even tell me about it. I mean, look it up. What do you get when you hit 100,000 100, subscribers? You get a bar of silver. Hmm. And you want me to believe a Bible-believing Christian can get to that point? I don't think so. Who is making these preacher, these people, I'll say it that way, who is making them rich? God or uh, the king of Sodom? YouTube, Google, that puts out all kinds of wicked filth and everything else, and they're putting ads for wicked things onto your videos that you can't even control. It'd be like somebody coming up to you and saying, hey, here's an envelope full of money, and uh, don't worry about where you're getting it from. I mean, are these guys that are monetized, are they going through the list and saying, okay, I, you know, uh, Google, YouTube, I thank you for monetizing my videos, but here's a list of the people that I'm not going to accept money from. My little analogy I used, you know, the guy comes up and he says, hey, here's the, here's the money, just take it. And I go, okay, um, you know, if, if, I mean, if that ever happened, it never has, <laughs> probably never will, but the point is some guy comes up and says, here, this is money, take it, don't ask questions. I'm going to say, oh, uh, okay, who are you? Um, where did this money come from? Whatever. You think I'm crazy enough to just take money from somebody? Just no questions asked. Just, you know, somebody come. Here you go. I need to know where this money's coming from. I need to know who you're connected to. You know, I had a guy the one time you know, just said he wanted to get, donate to the ministry and things. And I was like, oh, praise the Lord and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I kind of had a controversial past or whatever else. And I was like, well, you know, not a big deal. And he's like, well, you know, okay. And I, you know, kind of bothered me. And I thought, well, maybe I better check into this guy and stuff. And, and, uh, looked up his name, you know, found this LinkedIn profile. You know, this guy in the LinkedIn profile was Jesuit educated. You know, I think it was like one or two Jesuit universities had been to. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. I'm going to take, uh, you know, donation from some guy to Jesuit, you know, trained Jesuit. And I was like, if this is you, I'm not taking anything from you, <laughs> you know. And he was like, no, 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 no. That's not me. That's not me. He's like, no, no. And he sent me, you know, his information. He, he was fine, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to take money from somebody that when I know that they're connected to wicked organizations. And by the way, I've had the offer too, okay. Don't tell me, well, you're just not good enough on YouTube. Oh, please. It's been for years and years and years now. They've been after me to monetize my channel. They're they're sending me stuff all the time, you know. Hey, we can help you grow your channel and stuff like this. We can get you into this special YouTube program and all this other stuff for years and years and years. In fact, probably shortly after I came on YouTube, you know, long before a lot of these people even had channels on YouTube, they were asking if I wanted to be monetized, and I said no. And you know what my answer today is? No. I'm not taking money from the king of Sodom. The Lord will provide. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's go to the New Testament now. See what the Bible teaches. And, you know, we've been over this before uh, many times. But uh, you are to renew your mind. The way you renew your mind is by going over old things over and over again. It never hurts to read through the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. What are the rules for a New Testament uh, man in ministry? Um, and I do believe there are women in ministry too, their own specific ministry and things, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, what are the rules specifically for a preacher? Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 through 19. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Hmm. 
Why would you emphasize flock? Well, because the flock is the people that are saved. We are supposed to be shepherds. I'm supposed to feed you know, the flock of God out there. I'm supposed to feed you Scripture and, and teach you the Bible and things like that. And it says here, Who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? If I tell you how to get your health right and how to get your life right and how to, to help out with your finances and whatever else, I'm feeding you and it prospers you in your life. And you say, okay, Brother Brian was the one that really taught me this stuff and really showed me these things. I'm thankful. I want him to continue with his preaching and teaching. So I'm going to give to his ministry. See how the thing works? Now, how does that work out if you're monetized? Getting your money from secular people. Are, are they the flock? problem. Let's continue. Verse 8. Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? He's talking to saved people. You're supposed to get your money from saved people. So what's going on here? Verse 12. If others be partaker, partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. There are times that even professing Christians, you shouldn't take money from those people. And I, like I said, I have done that. I actually got a donation one time from Stephen Anderson. I was like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I sent it back, you know, and it was Stephen Anderson. I mean, it came from, you know, his little thing down there, cult thing down there and stuff like this. Now, I think he just wanted to get my email address and things, but, you know, because you can get my email address if you send a donation, you know. It is like a dollar donation or something like this, you know. So, and I was just like, I don't care if you want my email address. You're not going to, you know, say, well, I gave him a donation. I, was, I sent the thing right back actually lost money because, you know, you, you end up losing money when you go through PayPal. But another story there. But there are times and places that even you shouldn't even take money from a Christian, professing Christians. Where is the justification from taking money from the lost world for your ministry? I mean, it's just so foreign. I don't even understand how you can do that. How your conscience wouldn't be screaming and going, what in the world? Just che checking the mail you know, envelope full of money. Where'd that come from? Our good friends at Google. Huh? It's bad. Verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Okay? Keeping me in full-time ministry is going to help out everybody out there. There's a lot of people that are getting saved through this ministry. You know, real salvation, not the phony baloney stuff that you see on a lot of the other channels and stuff. And there are other people out there leading people to the Lord as well. So it's not all just me. You know, my enemies love to say that. All right. But this ministry has produced a lot of fruit down through the years. Lots and lots of fruit. All right. And if, you know, you want to look at our operating costs and stuff like that as far as what we have, I mean, we don't have very much. You know, we operate on a very, very low budget, so to speak. So, you know, when you preach the gospel, you should live of the gospel. Right? I want to stay active in the ministry. Verse 15, But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Okay, what's going on there? Well, Paul is simply saying, I, you know, I'm called to preach the gospel. But... Again, the Corinthians had some real carnality issues, and so Paul's saying, I know what's going to happen. 
as soon as I mean, I, it's, it's amazing to me. As soon as I say any kind of thing, oh, Lord, prosper us, and, you know, we got a new this or whatever, you know, some kind of thing. You know, we drive old vehicles and stuff, so. But I'm just saying, any kind of decent thing, it's just like, oh, must be nice, you know. I saw some guy the one time wrote in the comments, must be nice to have all those books. Think of how many poor people that could have fed. I mean, literally, that was the comment. And I'm just going like, okay. So if I didn't have these books to study the Word of God, then I would be called uneducated. But because I have the books, then I'm greedy and taking money from poor people. <laughs> See? Now, if that guy said, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to donate to your ministry and things, you know, and again, I've, I've gotten private messages from people and they'll be like, you know, I don't agree with you and I think you're, you know, very heretical on a couple of things, but I do think what you're doing is good for the most part and, and whatever, but, you know, and, and I'd like to donate, but, you know, I just, I wish that you would, I don't want your money. I don't want your money. I mean, I've said this before and I'm going to reiterate it here again. If King James Video Ministries ever you know, the, the support just does not come in anymore and I have to go back to my secular occupation that I was doing before this, that's what's going to happen. Um, there have been times, by the way, when I have done work outside of ministry type of work to pay bills and things like that, you know. But again, the thought of me using the ministry to get money from lost people, I just, I don't, I don't understand how somebody can justify that. I really don't. It's all well. They, you know, they're, they're, people have bills to pay. You can turn in your Bible to Second Corinthians chapter eight. We'll read there next. Well, they got bills to pay. They got such you know these bills to pay and things. Um, yeah, I do too. And uh, since I've been in in full time ministry, uh, I've never had a problem paying a bill. There are times we have money problems. <laughs> you know, you're going to see that here in just a little bit with what you know Paul says. There are times when you have some difficult times to get through, but. Uh, you know, it's not, there's no regular paycheck or salary or anything like that. You know, it's, it's as the Lord puts that, you know, um, desire in somebody's heart to say, hey, I've really been blessed by this ministry. I'm going to, you know, help the thing keep going. That's the way the thing works. But to say, I'm going to yoke up with lost people to make sure that I get more money coming in. That's a major problem. That is a very major problem. Why? Well, think about it. If they're spending, if they're all of a sudden starting to send you money because you're doing certain types of videos that get the views, you know, are you going to be more or less tempted to start cutting corners to get that more paycheck coming in? You're going to be more tempted. And the temptation to compromise the truth and not say things that will offend people, that temptation is just going to go higher and higher and higher. You know, and I'll tell you right now, I can speak from experience. I've been in ministry for 10 years now. And I can tell you, there are times when you go through some really hard financial times, the temptation will start to arise and those thoughts will start to come into the mind. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I'm being too, you know, controversial. Maybe I should kind of tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I thank the Lord I've not done that. I just, you know, I believe in telling it like it is and, and continuing and, and if the thing ever folds, I mean, you know, let me just say this, you know, I got I to gotta continually just say this. A lot of people don't watch all the videos and I realize there's a lot of them, but, you know, before I got saved, been called into full-time, well, even after I got saved, but before I went into full-time ministry, I was a wood turner, an artistic wood turner, and I had wooden bowls that were selling for four or five hundred dollars, you know, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't leave my art career to come to doing preaching because the money in preaching was so much better. You know, God's blessed us and I'm thankful for that. God does amazing things for us. But, you know, people, oh, you're doing this because you're too lazy to get a real job or something. Okay. <laughs> you don't know too much, do you? But let's continue here. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verses 13 through 15. Here's another very important thing. It says here, For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, He that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. Okay, you're not supposed to have this 
real big, you know, separation within the body of Christ where you have millionaire Christians and, you know, really, really poor Christians that can barely put food on the table. That's a problem. Okay, and this is not teaching communism because you, you read over and uh, you find the verse real quick here. Because I do need to kick this thing of the, the welfare mentality. Uh, i trying to think of where this is. Is it Second Thessalonians? Yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter uh, three, verse ten. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So the the body of Christ is not about you know some lazy bum sitting over here and he doesn't want to work, and the rich people that work hard should be giving him money and things and supporting him. That's not what it's about, because you read that right there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If you don't work, you don't eat. What it's about is, if God has really prospered somebody and they're doing really well, and they see another Christian that's working hard, but having a hard, a difficult time with bills and whatever else, help them out. You see? But again, let me ask you the question. You get some uh, Christian that has a monetized Google account that's got over 100,000 subscribers, I mean, look up some of the statistics. They make a lot of money when you get up into that subscription range. And you're up in there and stuff, and, and it's just like, you know, this person's making all kinds of money. Do you think that they're going to help out a Christian that's not making much? And uh, if they're getting that many subscribers and this much money coming in, do you think that there's ever a time when they come out and say, hey, you know what, please, everybody, stop sending donations. We're doing really good. Okay, I mean, we're, we're yoked up to... Google here, you know, we're making a lot of money off of these videos. Lots of ad revenue coming in. I actually had a guy, uh, Jim Beckwith, came out the one time and he said, he said to me, oh, I just monetized my account. Hey, if you ever need any financial help in the future, you know, just let me know. Yeah, and he's got all these little, uh, what do you call them, uh, little click porn, you know, things, uh, little exciting ads and pictures and stuff like this and, you know, and again, another guy that, you know, for a long time, oh, Brother Brian, I'm so thankful for you and everything else, and said a few things he didn't like, and now it's just stab, stab in me in the back again. You get used to it after a while, but just kind of irritating. But, you know, how does this thing work out? Again, I'm just going, I mean, right now, this ministry is fully 100% supported by God's people. We, you know, live very, very low cost. I don't get a cent from Google. I don't get a cent from anybody, any secular thing or whatever else, you know. And, and you know, i got to say this too, and that is I've seen people, you know, they, they seem to think that the only way I'll write back to them is if they donate money or they'll, like, apologize. I can't donate money right now. You don't have to. If the Lord places it in your heart and you have something that you can give and, you, and you've been blessed by this ministry, okay, go ahead. But if not, you know, you got to understand, you know, I'm one guy, <laughs> And there's thousands of people that contact me, and I try to help as many people as I can. But it's not easy. But uh, I will never, ever, ever take money from the lost world. That is never going to happen. I just, I cannot fathom doing that. Um, and of course, too, there's a whole thing there with copyright type of stuff, too. When you start to monetize your videos, they're, they're basically paying you you know, money and things for your videos, and there's, it's kind of like now they become a partner, and they control your videos that much more. But let's continue. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 19. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Again, he's writing to Christians, their care of him. Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. How many subscribers do you have? I don't know. It's 20,000 something now. I have no idea. I kind of, you know, was hoping that they'd go down and, they, you know, they just keep going back up again. You know, it's more and more people subscribing. You know? <laughs> and whatever state I'm in, I learned to be content. I'm not going to yoke up to the lost world to grow this channel. It's not going to happen. 
Verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Boy, I can tell you I live in that verse. Uh, there are many times that it's just like I'm, I'm literally going like, ah, you know, I, I guess I'm going to have to start doing whatever and things like this. And I, I'm like right at the brink of saying, well, honey, I'm going to have to start, you know, selling firewood or selling this or doing that or working whatever jobs or whatever else. And it's just like I'm just going to have to put the ministry to the side for a little bit. And just about that time, somebody gives a gift to the ministry and we're back. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. But again, to cheapen this ministry by going and taking money from the lost, I, I, I guess I just don't get it. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Key scripture. Notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Again, perfect description of, you know, what a real Christian ministry is all about. You don't desire a gift. You aren't desiring to make it rich, you know, yoking up the secular people and having them promote your channel. But I desire fruit that may abound to your account. You give to this ministry because there's fruit being produced here, and that's going to be rewards for you at the judgment seat of Christ. I can't be a missionary to Africa. But if I find a missionary and they say, hey, I need some money, I need some help to get over, there you go. And I do give money to people too, by the way. That's another thing. It isn't just all coming into King James Video Ministries and this is where it stays and whatever. And we're living high on the hog or something. I don't think so. I mean, we're trying everything we can right now to save up to get another place. And we got the July 17th coming up here when our property that we have, you know, is going to be for sale or, or excuse me, the sale date, closing date thing is the 17th here in less than two weeks. I hope everything goes through and, and you know, we're going to use that money and and we're looking for a place that we can, you know, go and buy and things, you know. Why? Well, so that we can be more efficient. Uh, so we can separate, you know, our dream is eventually to be able to have separate place for the ministry and where we're living. So we can just, you know, kind of unplug from the whole thing and just, you know, have a better place to put sermons together and things like that. But continuing here, verse 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All right? Interesting com concept here. Okay? You see, the just shall live by faith. We are supposed to live by faith. But it works two ways in terms of giving to a ministry. All right, I have all in a bound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. It's a sacrifice for you to donate to a ministry. I'm making sacrifices being in ministry. I could be probably making a lot more money out in the secular world, and I'd have regular money coming in, you know, but. I sacrifice my time. I sacrifice a lot of things. I mean, the vast majority of people that I'm in contact with through the ministry, you know, are not active supporters of the ministry. And that's fine. That's fine. God does not put it in the heart of everybody. There's other ministries that you're taking care of or helping out with and things. Fine. Please, please, please do not think that I'm saying, you know, I can't be your friend if you don't donate. No, 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 no. Those people that God puts it in their hearts, hey, Help Brother Brian out. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. If you're not one of those people, I'm still going to be your friend. I'm still going to talk to you and, and try to answer your questions and things. That's fine. You see? But for those people out there that say, well, I'd like to give you know something and I think I can and, and whatever else, understand that when you give, verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to His righteous riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
See, it's a sacrifice for me, and I have to live by faith that the Lord's going to meet the bills that I have and be able to provide for us. But it's also a sacrifice and a walk of faith for you when you give to a ministry. And I mean, you know, again, if you're like, okay, we can't put food on the table, put food on the table. Okay, remember, there's supposed to be equality. Don't put yourself into a situation of poverty trying to support every ministry out there. All right. You see, it's equality. You know, that's supposed to be there. So, but, you know, both positions take a sacrifice. But again, how does that work if you have your channel monetized? And all you're trying to do is get people to click on your videos. And you're getting uh, money from um, undisclosed recipients. I mean, I wonder what would happen if some of these monetized uh, uh, <coughs> brethren, I wonder what would happen if they actually were given a list of who gave them money. Where did the, each one of their, this whatever figure they get, the check in the mail, who, was, who were the uh, donors, so to speak, the people that paid for those ads and things like that? I wonder. Finally, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4 through 10. And there's a whole lot more scriptures we could go over. I mean, you cannot serve God and mammon, you know. We'll go over another one. I just thought of a good one. Don't have it here in my notes, but definitely have to go over another one. But 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 4 through 10 it says here but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God there's approval you're going to see that thing 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 11 you know there's different things listed there in all things you have you know approved yourself to be clear in this matter you know there's approval there as a Christian you know this this weird notion that anybody that says I'm a Christian you just go oh praise the Lord that's wonderful it's going to become very apparent in the future as Christianity is being persecuted more and more that you don't just believe anybody that comes into your into the into your midst and says, I'm a Christian. You know, be careful. But the ministers of God that you're supposed to, you know, listen to and, and they can you ask the questions to and things like this, they need to go through some approval. Okay, let's read these. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. In afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil evil report. I got that one covered. You know, people doing that about me. <laughs> you know, and good report. As deceivers, and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Can you call yourself poor yet making many rich when you are monetized and you're getting lots and lots of money? Can you do that? Your money is coming from the lost world, from the king of Sodom. You know what I mean? You need to think about that stuff. So, well, Brother Brian, how are you doing with that list there? Well, never had any stripes yet. I haven't been beaten yet. Uh, haven't been to prison yet. Hope I don't have to go to prison. Things have changed a lot since the first century. You know. Uh, patience. Um, I'm going to be very frank with you. I'm going to confess a fault openly. I'm not very patient a lot of times. Um, you know, I, I've said this in other studies, and, I, you know, sometime I'll bring out more information, but I've, I've kind of a um, bit of a wild um, teens and early 20s, you know, life, and, and um, patience was not a virtue for me, okay? Uh, I was uh, pretty, pretty crazy. And it's, I still got a little bit of that in me. You know, I'm still a little bit wild. Uh, you might not think that, but I still have to be kind of calmed down sometimes and, and things. And, and uh, sometimes my flesh gets the best of me. You know, I mean, I, I get kicked 
thousands of times a day now. It's just, it's crazy. And uh, I mean, some of the stuff people come up with about me and things. I saw this one thing here not long ago. Uh, I'm a Amish reptilian, um, forget, Amish reptilian modalist. There's a video out there circulating about me being an Amish reptilian modalist. You know, another one was, uh, one of my favorites was that uh, um, I'm a CIA mind-controlled slave. My wife is my handler, and this house was provided by the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Some real fun ones. But, you know, I struggle with patience. It's very hard for me. And I'm, I'm going to try to strive a little bit more to be more patient and to uh, just avoid these people out there and stuff and, and I apologize I know a lot of times I'm trying to answer things and and uh, you know I get away from really spending time in the word and preaching good sound scriptural studies um, but you know there's things that people ask, ask me questions I mean this is one this is a subject that's come up about monetization and people are defending monetization and I'm going how can you defend monetization and then I realize you know maybe they don't know they don't know the scriptures behind it and uh, you know I mean, I, I'm trying to protect the flock. Don't you people understand that? I know my, you know, the friends of this ministry, you understand. But the people out there, don't you understand? Don't you understand that when I see a wolf in sheep's clothing and I say, hey, whoa, whoa, wait a second. How's that guy getting so many subscribers? And he's getting money. Do you understand that? I mean, again, understand. When somebody has lots of subscribers, that means lots of money coming from lost people for them making Christian videos. Doesn't that set off any alarms in the mind? Don't you kind of go, uh-oh, me clicking on this guy's video, the minute I click on his video, he's making money from undisclosed recipients. Finally, we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Got to end it there. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. We'll start there. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud. It's a problem with a lot of these monetized people. Knowing nothing, but doting about questions, questions and strifes of words. You know, all Romans 10, 13, when it says uh, call, it actually means believe. And you don't have to confess with your mouth. It just means, that, you know, strifes of words. Just read the context of Romans chapter 10. Read it. <laughs> you know? Strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. Amen to that. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Yeah, you need to think about that. Verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you content with waiting on the Lord to pay your bills? Or do you go to outside sources make money off of Christian videos? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Hmm. Look at verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. That's what this ministry is going to be about. I will promise you, my viewers, Brian Denninger, will never, ever, ever monetize this channel. I will never accept money from the lost world for this ministry. If I want to sell a vehicle, or I want to you know, make a wooden bowl or something, or, or sell somebody firewood, I'm going to sell to lost people. Absolutely. I'm making a product or selling something that's secular. But if you think that I'm going to put videos out preaching the Word of God and make money from the lost world and I don't even know who it's where is it coming from and things like this you know I don't think so 
trying to think of a better way to say it, but it's not going to happen. I will never take money from the lost world. It's not going to happen. So please be careful who you're watching, brethren. You know, I just, it's just so disgusting to me. And I realize, you know, we're in the end times and you're going to have people departing from the faith and, and things like that. I, I understand that. But, I don't know, it just, it irritates me, I guess. So, I've got it out there. It's been said. Uh, people want to just continue watching those that are monetized. Well, you go ahead. You watch them. But uh, I'm not going to. And I'm not going to recommend those ministries. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. And we will see you in the next study.